In this video, we're going to be looking at a common low level design coding question, which is to design a sliding window. So let's jump in. So sliding windows are commonly used as a rate limiting algorithm, which is to protect services from being overwhelmed. And so a rate limiter is simply a tool or mechanism that controls the number of requests or actions a user or system can perform within a specific time period. And its use cases include preventing system overload and also protecting against distributed denial of service attacks. The way sliding windows works is it continuously tracks the number of requests in the past defined period, for example, the last 60 seconds. As time moves forward, the windows slide, moving all requests and adding new ones. This prevents burst issues seen in fixed window algorithms by distributing requests limits more evenly over the time. For example, a messaging app could limit users to send only 20 messages per minute using a sliding window. This ensures that users can't flood the chat with messages all at once and maintains a steady flow of communication, enhancing user experience. So let's jump into the question description. So as always, we have the description on the left and the code on the right. So let's start off with the description. So our job is to design a rate limiting system that follows the sliding window algorithm. We are given the class sliding window with the following attributes. We have max requests, and this is the maximum number of requests that may occur in any contiguous window of length window seconds for a single client. Window seconds is the length in seconds of the sliding time window that is checked for each request. Each client, which is identified by a client ID, is tracked independently. A request is allowed if after discarding timestamps that are older than now minus the window seconds, the client is made strictly fewer than the max requests in that remaining window. So our job is to implement the following methods. So we have the sliding window. So in the constructor, we'll take a max requests, which is a number and window seconds, which is also a number. So our job here is to initialize the data structures. Both arguments are optional. We have an allow request method, which takes a client as a string and returns a Boolean. So we record the request if it is allowed and then return true. Otherwise we return false and nothing is recorded. For get remaining requests, we are given a client and we return an integer. So our job is to return the number of additional requests the client may still make in the current window, a non-negative integer. So looking at the example here, the first line here are the operations. So the constructors and methods, and then below the parameters pass. So for sliding window, we're giving it two values, two representing the number of requests allowed in a time window, and then 60 representing the length of the window, in this case, 60 seconds. We then call allow request with for the client ID 123, get remaining requests with the client ID 123, and then so on and so forth. So let's look at the explanation to understand what we expect to happen. So initially we initialize the sliding window class with max request of two and window seconds of 60, that returns null. Then we check to allow the request for client ID of one, two, three, this returns true. And now we only have one request left in this time window. Then we call get remaining requests for the client ID of one, two, three, and this returns one. We initially had two, made one request, so now we have one. Then we call allow request again for that same client with ID 123, and this returns true, and the number of available requests should now be zero. Then when we call get remaining requests for that same client, it is now zero. And then when we call allow request, it simply returns false because the sliding window is now full as we only had two available requests and both have been used. And so if we look at the constraints, we can assume the judge calls the methods in real time, and any two successive calls are at least zero milliseconds apart. And that is why in this example, the sliding window is now full, and this client cannot make any more requests. So let's jump into the code. So in the constructor, we'll create max requests, which represents the number of calls a client can make in one window. Window seconds, again, represents the length in seconds of that window. And then we have request timestamps, which is a dictionary where the key will be the client IDs and the values will be Unix timestamps when the client made requests. We're using a default dictionary here, which automatically populates each new key with an empty list as the default value, which makes sense as when a new user joins, they will not have made any requests. Finally, we create a lock to ensure atomic updates when multiple threads access the request timestamp simultaneously. And so this is not strictly necessary in an interview, but it's a great way to go above and beyond and maybe impress your interviewer. Next, we have an internal method as indicated by the leading underscore clean old request. And the purpose of this method is to remove timestamps that fall outside of the current sliding window for a given client. 
and this will be used in more than one methods in the class and hence why we have abstracted it into a separate function to prevent code duplication. The current time variable, so this gets the current Unix epoch time, a float in seconds using time.time. .time. The cutoff time calculates the earliest timestamp still in the window and any request older than that should be discarded. We then rebuild the list of timestamps for that client by keeping only those that are newer than the cutoff time and then we use list comprehension to return a filtered list that immediately overwrites the old one. The next method is allow request and this asks may the client make a new request right now and so current time again captures the per precise moment of the incoming request. We then use self.lock which will acquire the lock so everything inside the ind indented block is atomic and thread safe. We then call clean old requests so this internal method will prune stale timestamps so counts are up to date before checking limits. The conditional statement checks how many valid requests the client has made in the current time window and if that number is below the maximum request requests, a new request is allowed. This will add the current request timestamp to the list, effect effectively spending one quota of this time slot. Then we simply return true, which signals to the caller that the request is permitted. Otherwise, if the client has already hit the limit, we simply return false, denying that request. The final method is get remaining requests, and this returns how many requests the client can still make right now. So again, the lock ensures the computation and any internal mutation are thread safe. The internal method clean all requests purges expired timestamps so that the count is fresh. We then calculate the remaining allowance by subtracting the current, so the fresh count from max requests, and then the max guards against negative values if something went wrong. So in short, the class rate limits each client ID to max request calls per window seconds. It keeps pair client lists of timestamps and prunes them before every check, and a lock ensured safety if many threads hit the same limiter concurrently. So let's run the code and see if it passes. Perfect, it passed. Let's run the test suite and hope all tests pass. Perfect, all the tests pass. So now let's look at the time and space complexity. So the time complexity for allow request and get remaining requests is O1 amortized and OW worst case where W is less than or equal to max requests and is the number of timestamps still in the current window. And for the space complexity, it's big O of U times max requests where U is the number of distinct clients ever seen. So if you want to test yourself, the link to the question is in the description. And if you got any value out of this, be sure to like and subscribe and share it with a friend. It helps the channel out a lot and I will see you in the next one.